Are we really ready for electric cars? Welcome to Mark and Pete Live. I'm Pete, a clergyman. With me is Mark, who's a businessman. Now, this one, uh, this uh, topic for today is re- really interesting. Could affect, um, well, I suppose many people in the country pretty soon. Well, clergyman Pete, if you are very fond of your lovely vehicle, take note mm-hmm. because yeah. the government yeah. plans to ban the sale of all new petrol and diesel cars, including yes. vans, yeah. uh, within the next eight years. Now, yeah. what that means is that the transition to electric vehicles, EVs, yes, let's get into the acronyms right now, oh, will yes, soon become the most common option for anyone wanting to buy a brand new car. Now, what's interesting here is is that um, among the 35 million cars driving around the United Kingdom alone, and that does not, of course, include uh, the other cars that are driving around the rest of the world, but let's stick to the United Kingdom for the moment, just 1.3% are electric vehicles, and that was registered in 2020. So that's a smaller number. But unfortunately, to hit the 2050 net zero target, the UK really has to transition quickly. But there are some issues here, folks. So drivers, are friends electric? Driving an electric car can make you feel eco-friendly and smug, while other road users in petrol engines just choke out and chug. But it's awkward when left stationary with a hard shoulder to shrug because there's nowhere to charge and the connection won't plug. (laughs) (laughs) Pete, I tell you, this is a great initiative, but really our infrastructure is inadequate. What say you about uh, this? Yes, it's it's bad timing because trying to bring in electric cars as the main source of, um, of transport that people use. Well, I mean, if you bring it in quickly, I, I believe, or before 2050, is that the, the government? Oh, yes, I think I'm yes. correct. That's just a ridiculous time scale, and we're nowhere near ready. I mean, even traveling about, if you prefer, you need a certain type of petrol, or um, it can be difficult, you know, to always find it, uh, you know, if you have a performance car. Uh, when it comes to have electric vehicle, you, you're just not going to get the um you you haven't got the infrastructure in place but also there are different um you know the different vehicles are are, are not all up, are on the same sort of um what's the word uh, the same well the sort of method of charging um there needs to be a more integrated approach if we're going to do it at all and and it needs to be thought through you need to have the infrastructure across the country before you were existing, that virtually everyone has an electric vehicle. I think I might yes. say it's just new yes. cars that have to be electric. I think that's well, this right. is true. But yeah. however, yeah. we yeah. must mention yeah. that not only is this going to affect the public, but it's going to yeah. affect businesses because it includes vans. So if yeah. you are a small business, you yeah. may yeah. have a van to get you about your business to your customer. The thing here is, let's take a step back. We know that it's important to reduce carbon monoxide. Let's be honest puking that out all over the streets um, is not great because people suffer. Their health suffers. People have actually died. So we need to have a good look at what we need to do. Transitioning is a good idea. If we do want to just at least park the environmental subject, from a business point of view, my concern is this. We're already seeing the cost of living going up dramatically, energy prices all around. So there's an issue. Is that actually going to go down? Well, I know that we're talking about 2050. But nevertheless, the idea of having more infrastructure with more onus on being able to generate more electricity is one issue. Then you've got the charger points. There is nothing that's standardized yet. Here's the other thing. I mentioned in my poem that there are actually, ironically, more than one connector point. So the thing here is that each vehicle is different. Now, imagine this. And people do it. If you are traveling with your vehicle, imagine this in the future, your vehicle going from the UK to France and you run out. One thing is the charge takes a long time. So you're charging up your vehicle to full is a one point. The second point is it doesn't actually as a vehicle give you longevity as much as a petrol or a diesel engine. That's the other one. And here's the, the other issue. What happens if things go wrong? And they do. 
batteries. Batteries are the key here yes. because yes. what happens exactly right. yeah. is when the battery lo loses its life, and even though battery technology is getting better and better, good business if you're into that, might be considering worth investing in if business people out there. But what I will say is this. There comes a point when you have to do something with those batteries, and not all of those batteries are going to be refurbishing. You're going to have to suddenly do something with them. Suddenly, if you scale that up across the world, that's a lot of batteries. Where the hell are we going to put them all? Um, so I do think that we haven't thought this through. And we're not aligned. The alignment with the UK, with Europe, with the rest of the, the world, if we are truly going to go electric as an electric vehicle, the, the innovations in the vehicles themselves, in battery technology and charger points, has to change dramatically. And I cannot see that happening over the next 25 years. It's just the time scales are just too tight. Yes. Well, yeah, I, I, I see that. as a good point you made. I, I think there were a couple of other points um, to, to do with well, you could do with the, the waste of energy in that if you're going to have cars being powered by electricity instead of by a fuel that is burned in the car, you know, diesel, um, petrol, or, you know, there are some gas cars, of course, then you're introducing another stage of change of energy form. In fact, you've got another two because you've got the fuel to the, uh, to the, Turning normally it's water turning a, uh, a turbine through steam, so it's already two changes. Then you've got the change in the car from electrical to mechanical. So you introduce inefficiencies. You're using up more energy, yeah. And uh, then, of course, you're burning fossil fuels in order to do it. Uh, that's you say you could change that. Could use nuclear, for example, but we're not ready yet, which is the point uh, you were making earlier. But the. Uh, the other thing that I would say to do with the batteries, um, I don't think you've mentioned this yet, um, is the disposal of the batteries. Very exactly. To dispose of. Yeah. What do you do with them? It causes such a huge amount, of, a huge amount of uh, long-term pollution. It, it, yes, it's a, it's a terrible fiasco, Mark. Uh, can you change this <laughs> policy for me, please? This is something that I want. Well, this is what I would be looking at. I'd be working yes. heavily with, uh, obviously, the petrochemical. Yes, no, bear with me, folks. Petrochemical companies, the oil and gas companies, who have already made a clear attempt to go to more sustainable types of technology and fuels, but it is a transition. The point here is, is that those organizations are adept at implementing technology, working with other forms of technology. That's the, both the manufacturers, that's the car manufacturers, and those who help countries to generate energy. Now, I will say that whilst if we take the United Kingdom alone, there are other countries who are looking at sustainable fuels. They are looking at everything from wind farms, hydro, solar, and others. Great. We are already seeing an uplift. It's no longer, even on the projection of this, by 2050, we are still going to be reliant on carbon fuels. And that's the point here. Because what I think is, is that this whole game plan, whether it be about impact on the environment, whether it be to the economy, public cons consumption of vehicles, use of vehicles, and so on, needs to be replanned. And I, what I'm worried about is, is that for some reason there's a disconnect between manufacturers, battery manufacturers, car manufacturers, governments, including then the alignment with what um, big energy companies are trying to do. There some seems to be a big disconnect because obviously the energy companies want to use their business model for as long as they possibly can. Um, but I think that we simply are not going to get there. So what happens when we don't get there? Are we suddenly just going to stop? No. I think what needs to happen is, is that we need to completely agree with all of the different governments around the world, particularly in the developed com uh, countries, to say, we are going to have a game plan. Let's push it out another 25 years. Then that will be 50 years. The reason is, is that when you look at the statistics, many oil and gas producing countries are going to start to run out. Not completely. There are some that go way beyond that, the big countries as we know, America, Russia, and, and others, and to a certain extent, the Middle East. But I think that that's where we, we've got the opportunity. 
I think that, that they all need to come together and pull um, a different type of, of, of game plan. And if we don't do that, I can see that consumers will just simply say, we're not doing it. Buying an electric car today is extremely expensive. So, clergyman Pete, um, you presumably are not um, investing in an electric car at this moment in time. <laughs> well, well, I'm not because I'm not getting a new car. I'm not uh, not too flush with cash at the moment. So, I, no, I'm ah. not going to be doing that. But the um, the other thing is, um, I like electric cars. I like the noise they make. I've got a nice little sporty Alfa Romeo. Why shouldn't I? drive that around, uh, hoon it around, and go driving too fast, making a loud noise, you know. Um, yes, your petrol right, car or really. diesel car, yes. It's a petrol yes. car. <laughs> well, the, the yeah. thing here is, is that can you afford to spend £25,000 approximately for a new car? I'm talking about a small one. I'm not talking about, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, a big vehicle. And, and that's a lot of money for consumers to pay. Because to me, even though... And I know that this is um, this is something that um, I, I, I must admit that one of the arguments here is that at the moment, even though electricity prices have gone up, the idea is, is that in theory, the individual charging of a vehicle of an electric vehicle is less than a petrol one. So here's one thing just to sort of co close out this, this show. Now, Melanie Shufflebotham, yes. Yes, that's yes. her real name, is the co-founder yeah, of Zap Map, which maps the UK's charging points. And she says, if an EV, electric vehicle, is charged at home, the average price people are paying is roughly five pence per mile. That compares, she say, to a low cost of between 15 to 25 pence per mile for a petrol or diesel car. Yes, yeah. but it's the vehicle. Think about how yeah, much. You, know, you could go vehicle, out and get a yes. good, decent um, second-hand car, low mileage, for ten, fifteen thousand. 15000 You wouldn't be spending twenty five, thirty thousand. 30000 So you've got to think about that. That capital outlay is huge. So I'd be interested to know, clergyman Pete, what on earth are the public going to do here? Ultimately, I, I, they tend to be the voice of reason. Yes, I think the only way to change this is just non-compliance. Mm. I think people have to not do it. It's the only way that the government, the government, see sense if there is mass non-compliance. So uh, I'd le like to hear what uh, you gentle listeners are thinking. Put a comment below. We, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you're on the uh, on the audio website, uh, go to markandpete.com. Uh, leave a comment there, and uh, we'll probably go almost certainly uh, read them. And then if we do, and it's a sufficiently angry and bigoted comment, then we'll include it in a future show. But that's it for this time. Catch you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>